Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Brooks, Mr. Inside Sales, and I'd like to welcome all of you today to a very special webinar, Five Secrets to Effective Cold Calling. And to begin with, I'd like to acknowledge everyone for taking time out of your busy days. I know what it's like to be in sales, and I know that any time spent away from prospecting or closing deals generally is money lost, but here's the good news. I guarantee that I will give you today five techniques that will drastically revolutionize the way that you cold call over the phone, reducing resistance and helping you get through to decision makers and form connections that will make your prospecting and cold calling more effective. So a couple of ground rules. First of all, I want to make sure that you can all hear me okay. So if you would do me a, a favor and just put in there in the, the question, can you hear me and can you see the screen? All right, great. The yeses are rolling in. Thank you very, very much. Second of all, I would like to make sure that you all get the most out of today's program. So get something to take notes with. In other words, get a pen, get a pad of paper. You're going to want to write down the word-for-word -word scripts that I'm going to give you in today's webinar. You're going to want to make sure and capture all of these techniques and use them on your very next phone call after today's program. So if you're all ready, we're going to dive in. We've got over 900 companies that have registered for today's program. So that's a lot of people and a lot of companies who are interested in getting better at cold calling. So let's go ahead and jump in. Number one, let's give you something free. Hey, you gotta love that. I'm gonna give you three resources that are going to help you be more effective selling over the phone. And here is the first one. This is a so if you've not taken advantage of this, you're going to want to sign up for my free e-zine. You can simply go to my website, mrinsidesales.com, sign up for free. You will receive every Tuesday brand new scripts on how to sell over the phone more effectively. I write new scripts every week. You'll get them hot off the press. Also, as a bonus for signing up to my e-zine, you're going to get a downloadable $20 value, 10 techniques to make you closer of the month. You're going to want to take advantage of that right away. So make sure and do that too. Number two, you're also going to have the ability to watch other webinars. If you like the webinar that we've got right now for you, you're going to love this one as well. There are some webinars on this page, mrinsidesales.com forward slash webinar training.htm. You'll get some more webinars on phone scripts and closing techniques. If you're a manager, a business owner, make sure your team watches this. Have your sales manager run these webinars in your sales meeting. Again, the good news, they're free. Now, number three, let me give you something else before we get started today. Take down this address, Mr. Inside Sales forward slash Inside Sales Training Blog. You will find my past e-zines loaded. They're all scripts. That's all you'll find there. Tons of free phone scripts, past articles, word-for-word -word scripts on cold calling, closing sales by the phone. Again, if you want to get better at selling over the phone, guess what? You're going to need to invest in yourself. You're going to need to take a little time. You're going to need to reach out and find the most effective techniques, customize them to your selling situation, and then use them over and over and over again. That's how you're going to get better at selling over the phone. And hopefully I've just made that easier for you by providing you with these resources invest in yourself take some time for yourself okay let's jump in we have a lot to cover today so let's talk a little bit about what you're going to learn cold calling best practices and by the way I just have to say one thing you know a lot of people say hey cold calling is dead well if cold calling was dead 900 companies wouldn't be signed up for a webinar on cold calling hey I don't care if you call it warm calling or 
calling back referrals or social net doesn't matter how you got a lead guess what at some point you have to pick up the phone and make a cold call or a warm call but you're going to have to use the phone so here's what you're going to learn today because you're going to run into these problems regardless of your selling situation number one we're going to teach you and give you today a proven technique about how to avoid getting screened out by the gatekeeper. Hey, let me see a show of hands here. How many people hate calling into companies and getting that dreaded question? Will he know what this call is about? Huh? If that doesn't send shivers down your spine, nothing will. Have you spoken to him before? Does he know you? Oh, by golly, guess what? Here's the good news. I'm going to give you today a proven technique that I use every single day when I make cold calls and prospecting calls that helps me breeze past 65 to 70 percent of gatekeepers without getting challenged. I'll bet you'll love that technique. Number two, I'm going to teach you how to use a more effective opening statement. We're also going to show you the biggest mistake that most people who are selling over the phone, cold calling, prospecting, making those phone calls make when they open their mouth for the very first time. They're making a cardinal error that you can avoid. I'll show you how to do that. Plus, I'm going to give you better openings as well. Number three, I'm also going to teach you how to build instant rapport. Hey, you know how it is. You call somebody, they pick up the phone. As soon as they realize it's a salesperson, have you ever heard their voice drop? Have you ever heard that negative attitude come from them? You, they're not saying anything, but it's the way they're saying it. They realize now they're dealing with somebody who's cold calling them, and they're turned off. How many of you have ever experienced that? A lot, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to show you how to not do that. More importantly, I'm going to give you a proven technique that if you begin using it today will change the way that you build rapport. Number four, I'm going to teach you how to overcome initial resistance. Hey, one of the reasons people hate cold calling is they always get blown off, right? <clears throat> they get put off by initial resistance. Now, re initial resistance are things like, well, I'm not interested, right? We're not interested, right? Hey, just go ahead and email me something. These are all blow-offs. Guess what? 80% of sales reps get blown off of the phone. This is why there is call reluctance. This is why they hate picking up the phone. Now, here's the other good news. The top 20% of closers, and this picture is a guy, he's one of them, <laughs> a top 20% closer knows how to deal with initial resistance. They easily deal with it. It doesn't phase them at all. Why? Because they use the technique I'm going to teach you today. And number five, and here's this is so important. I tell you, if you, if you don't learn anything today, just start practicing this. It'll change how you sell over the phone. And this is how to qualify for timeline. Now, one of the most effective things you can do when you cold call is at the end of your qualification process is to qualify for timeline. I'm going to teach you how to do that. Most sales reps are just happy if someone will take their information or set up a demo. These are not qualified people. They have no idea when they're going to buy. They have no idea what their time frame is. Hey, you can't stuff your pipelines full of unqualified leads. So we're going to teach you how to qualify for timeline. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in here. Let's talk about the different ways that companies generate leads because many companies, hopefully yours too, engage in a variety of marketing activities. And hey, if you're in the situation where your marketing department feeds you leads, that's great. Hey, you know, again, cold calling isn't dead. You still have to pick up the phone to call these people. But many companies advertise. Many companies advertise on the Internet. They drive leads. They drive so-called warm leads. And if that's what you're receiving, then that's great. Marketing activities can help bring in leads. But again, you still have to pick up the phone and make a phone call. How about referrals? Some of you receive referrals. In fact, some people are really good at getting and asking for referrals, and some people aren't. Now, that's great if you have referrals, but guess what? If you get a name, you get perhaps somebody's department title, you still have to pick up the phone and do what? You bet, cold call. 
Number three, social media. Oh, by golly, when social media came out a few years ago, again, the people came out of the woodwork. Consultants put programs together. Never cold call again. Yeah, right. Well, I, I have one thing to say to all those people out there with the no cold calling programs. Hey, if we took the telephones away from salespeople, could they make a living? Of course not. You still have to pick up the phone, regardless of if you get a connection on LinkedIn or Twitter or another lead source. So guess what? Social media might be great for identifying prospects. I'll give you that. Sure it is. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you still have to do what? You bet. Pick up the phone and make a phone call. Hey, networking and trade shows. How many people come on with fish bowls filled with business cards? Huh? Pretty neat, huh? Hey, I remember George. Yeah, I remember Susan. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll call, call Susan. Yeah, she'll remember you. She's waiting for your call. She can't wait for you to call and pitch her. Yeah, right. Hey, guess what? Networking, trade shows. And no matter what you do, all these lead sources, at the end of the day, you still have to what? cold call, prospect, pick up the telephone. Now, people who try and rely on these kinds of marketing activities to make a living, they're not doing so well. Guess what? Here's the good news. Cold calling is the only lead generation activity that is directly under your control. And I'll tell you right now, in fact, I know you already know this to be true. If you could only get good at cold calling, if you could only get really strong, effective, at dealing with the gatekeeper, getting through to the decision maker, connecting, building instant rapport, qualifying properly, by golly, handling the initial resistance. If you could only get good at those things, how much more money would you make? Think about that. How much more money would you make if you weren't afraid to pick up the phone? How much more money would you make if you actually enjoyed, what a concept, huh? Enjoyed cold calling, enjoyed prospecting over the phone. Well, I got news for you. The top 20% closers in your company, and you know who they are. In fact, you might even be one of them. The top 20% closers in your company, in your industry, they're making all the money and all the sales, and they do it easily. Why? Because they're using proven techniques that work. So, are you ready? Are you ready to learn these techniques? If you are, get your pens out, get your paper out, get ready. And here we go. Again, five best practices using a proven technique to get past the gatekeeper, using a more effective opening, building instant rapport, overcoming initial resistance, and identifying timeline. Let's jump into number one, how to get past the gatekeeper. Okay, first of all, again, get your pens ready. I'm going to give you the technique right now. Now, you're going to see this technique. And your first reaction may be, well, that looks pretty simple. That's not going to work. Let me tell you this. This is the most powerful technique that I use and all the companies I work with use. And at once you start using it, you will be amazed at how you no longer get drilled and interrogated by gatekeepers. But you have to use it exactly as I'm going to give it to you now. Here's what it is. Hi, could you please connect me with John, please? And they say, can I tell them who's calling? You respond with, yes, please. Please tell them Mike Brooks with Mr. Inside Sales is holding, please, or whatever your name and company is. Now, I'm going to give you a minute to write that down. I'm going to tell you why it's so effective. First of all, what you're using is that magic word, please, two times in the opening. Hi, could you please connect me with John, please? Now, let me just tell you something. Please is the second most important word in the English language next to somebody's first name. Right? Hey, you ask anybody what their favorite name in the English language is, it's your first name. John, Bob, Susan, doesn't matter who it is, that's your favorite word. But the second most powerful word is please. You learn it when you're one years old. You want something, your mom looks down and says, what do you say? And you say, please. You say, please. Okay? Please is the most important powerful word that you can use. Now, gatekeepers, receptionists, office managers, they're not used to hearing please. In fact, most of your competition might even be you yourself who are calling. You're not asking please. You're asking for the person's name. You're almost making a demand. You're not being nice about it. But guess what? When they hear that magic word please, something changes. Something changes. Hi, could you please connect me with John, please? Yeah, can I tell him who's calling? Yes, please. Please tell them Mike Brooks with ABC is holding, please. Now, this last technique, you're using please again three times. 
you are giving them your full company name, which is very important. Some people like to hide the company. Well, just tell them it's John, like you're an old buddy. Hey, they're hip to that trick. They'll screen you out immediately. But let me give you two secrets here. This technique is effective not only because you're using please, but you're ending with an instructional statement. Where the ABC company is holding, please, please tell him, hey, receptionists, gatekeepers are there to take instruction. Most of the time, they don't care who you are. They just need two bits of information, your name and your company name. So when they call the decision maker, they say, yeah, it's Mike Brooks with the ABC company. But if you use this technique as I've just given it to you, try it for the rest of today. You will be amazed. Your interrogation, screening out by gatekeepers, will be eliminated by at least 50%, mostly 65, 70 once you get the inflection of this down right. Now some of you may say, well what happens if I don't have the prospect's name? No problem. You say, you call up and you say, oh hi, I need a little bit of help please. That's the technique. Write that down. Oh hi, I need a little bit of help please. That's your opening line. But the important thing with that technique is you have to stop. You can't then say, uh, I need to speak to the person who handles your XYZ. You have to wait for the gatekeeper to respond. How can I help you? Oh, thank you. I'm looking for the person who handles blank. Do you know who that is, please? And then, yes, great. Could you please tell them Mike Brooks with the ABC is holding, please? Again, this is a million-dollar technique. Use it. It will change your experience of dealing with gatekeepers. All right, number two, use the most effective opening. All right, now, here's what... 95% of inside and in fact all sales reps say when they finally get to a decision maker. They say, oh hi, and again nothing identifies you, telegraphs that you're now a salesperson than saying, how are you today? Admit it, you say it 18, 20, 50, 100 times a day, how are you? How are you? Well, let me ask you this question. How do you feel when somebody calls you at night, somebody you don't know, and says, oh, hi, is that Mr. Smith? How are you? Well, you don't probably don't, you probably don't uh, like to hear that. I know I don't. Just identifies this as a sales rep, has no idea who I am. It's obligatory. And guess what? It telegraphs to the person you're trying to connect with it. You are a telemarketer. You are a salesperson. You don't care how they are. And again, it identifies you as a salesperson. Throw it away as of today. Well, Mike, what should I do? Glad you asked. Here are some other opening statements that you can use that grab your, attent your prospect's attention. Here's my very favorite one. Hey, oh, hey, John, Mike Brooks with the ABC Company. How's your Wednesday morning going? Now, some of you may think, well, Mike, that sounds pretty much like how are you today. It's not. It's actually extremely different. Number one, it zeroes in on the day and the time. How's your Monday? How's your Wednesday morning going? When people hear that, they've never heard that before. They hear, how are you today? As soon as they hear, how's your Thursday morning? How's your Wednesday morning? How's your Friday morning going? It locks them into the day. It kind of snaps them into attention. They're now focused on the day. Believe me, you've got a much different and better reaction than how are you today. Again, try these techniques. Don't take my word for it. See for yourself how effective they are. Here's another one that's highly effective. Rather than ask them how they're doing, assume it. I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're having a good afternoon. Now, this is a very interesting technique. When I first heard this a few months ago, I didn't think it would be that effective. And I started working with a company that all their sales reps were using it. And what I identified is that it eliminated screening. It eliminated asking that, having that prospect come back and say, oh, I'm fine. What do you want? What can I do for you? So this is a really, actually, very effective opening, and I trust you're doing okay. You can vary it a little bit. Hey, I trust you're doing okay today. I hope you're having a great day. I hope your day is going okay. Again, it's an assumptive opening. It works. Write these down. Try them. See what works best for you. Hey, here's another one. Is it raining there, too? I'm sure you have weather reports. You probably know what the weather's like in the area you're calling into. Is it hot out there, too? Is the sun still beating? Is it still in the hundreds? Is it snowing? Is it sleeting? Hey, we had a lot of weather coming up here around the country. Again, vary your opening. Don't sound like every other inside sales rep calling them. Don't telegraph. You know, that's a great 
phrase in football. New quarterbacks, what do they do? They take the snap, they're going to throw the ball, they stare at the receiver they're going to throw it to through his whole route. Everybody in the stadium knows he's throwing it to the left because he's telegraphing his throw. It's the same thing with how are you today. This is a different opening. Hey, is it still a hurricane out there? Had you, were you able to survive that hurricane? You're going to want to ask that way. And here's one of my favorites, too. If you're working in a loud call center and you think that your prospect can hear the other people around you and you're kind of embarrassed about that, some of you are crawling under your desk, put, putting your finger in your ear, plugging up that other hole there, right? How about this one? Hey, John, this, this is Mike Brooks with the ABC Company. By the way, can, can you hear me okay? And again, did you hear the inflection in my voice? Did you hear the delivery of that line? Hey, here's one of the greatest things about using scripts. You don't have to think about what you're going to say. Instead, you can use your inflection, your pacing, your timing. You can mirror your prospect. This is what's going to make you effective, but that's a whole other webinar. Right now, you're going to want to change your opening so you can grab your prospect's attention and stop sounding like every other sales rep calling them, how are you? All right, are you with me on that? I hope you all are. we got a lot more information here to cover. All right, so let's go on to number three, how to build instant rapport. Let me tell you the problem. Here's the problem. Most sales reps open up a call if they finally get through to a decision maker. And again, they're not using any of these other techniques. They don't know how to get around a gatekeeper. They don't know how to establish instant rapport. So when they finally get those that ear on the other end of the phone of the decision maker, they vomit their presentation. They go into a monologue. This is me calling with them, and here's what we do, and we're the number one, and I just noticed your name, and I thought I'd give you a call to learn a little bit more about how you're, oh, my God. You know, the prospect is so turned off so quickly. They're very sorry they answered the phone. In fact, I've had some people say, gee, everybody I call just goes right to voicemail. Nobody answers the phone anymore. Yeah, you think? <laughs> because they don't want to hear from you. They don't want to hear that old monologue. So what you need to learn to do is, again, do things differently. Identify yourself as a top professional. Be somebody that they want to talk to. Build rapport instantly by using these techniques. John, we haven't spoken yet. OK, hey, acknowledge what is true and what is going through their head. Oh my God, I got a sales page. You know what? We haven't spoken yet, but I wanted to reach out to you very briefly for, okay? Or, hey, you know what, John? I got your name from the LinkedIn group, so-and-so, so-and-so. We haven't spoken yet, but I just wanted to reach out to you and ask you a quick question. By the way, that ask you a quick question is going to be a very, very big key here. And here's what it is. You know, and briefly, I just wanted to see if what we provide might, might help you. I'll organize your lead flow better. Let me ask you. Okay, I want you to look at these openings here. And I want to emphasize the most important thing about them. You see how short they are? Do you see how they end with instantly engaging that prospect? People say, hey, how do you build rapport over the phone? You let your prospect talk early. That's the answer to that question. How do you build rapport with somebody over the phone I've never spoken to before? You engage your prospect early. You allow them to ask you a question quickly. Okay, that's how you do that. So if this ends with it, let me ask you a quick question. All right, so hey, we haven't spoken yet. Briefly, though, I just wanted to see if what we provide might be of interest to you, might help you do whatever your product or service does. And then you need to ask a quick qualifying question. That's the key. After you go here, hey, you know, we haven't spoken yet. Or, I, or hey, you know, I got your name from LinkedIn. And briefly, and that, by the way, that word briefly is key. It telegraphs the right message to your prospect. It lets them know that you know you barged in on their day. It lets them know that you know you're a salesperson, that they didn't ask to have called them. I'm going to respect your time, John, briefly. Hey, we haven't spoken yet. Briefly. Hey, you know, I got your name from LinkedIn and briefly. Just wanted to make sure, I just wanted to see if what we provided might help you. Let me ask you a quick question. Then you ask a qualifying question. Are you using Salesforce or some other kind of CRM? How are you currently recording and logging your calls? Or, or any other question to engage your prospect. And you, by the way, this can be a qualifying question. Hey, I see on your website you're the VP of sales. Are you the right person to speak to about training? Right? Again, 
the important thing here is you must ask a question that engages your prospect. In other words, don't do what 80% of other sales reps are doing, which is barge into their day, read them a monologue, bore them to death, and make them wish they had never picked up the telephone. That's what 80% of sales reps and sales teams are doing. Oh, and I, you know, we're the number one company, and blah, 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 and I'm just calling to see if I can learn a little bit more about your business and set up a time that we can blah. Your prospect is hating that they picked up the phone. You cannot do that. I spend most of my time working with business owners and sales managers rewriting their awful scripts so that they can engage people, make a connection, and actually get into prospecting and qualifying. That's the key, qualifying. But this technique is going to allow you to do that. So again, you come back here. Hey, we haven't spoken yet. Just wanted to briefly, just wanted to ask you a quick question. You can even cut it into that. Are you using Salesforce or some other kind of, are you, are you the right person to be speaking with? Ask a question to engage your prospect. Let your prospect talk. Now, some of you are thinking, yeah, Mike, but here's the problem. If I let my prospect talk, they're going to blow me off. They're going to give me an initial resistance statement. I wouldn't be interested. Oh, yeah, we already have that handled. We were already working with somebody who does that. I can't ask them an immediate question. I got to get my whole pitch out because I may never have another chance. If that's what you're thinking, you're wrong. Hey, they may have initial resistance. That's just what sales, that's just what people do. And the initial resistance is a natural reaction to being sold. You use it all the time. You walk into Best Buy to buy a TV. You got the money in your pocket. The ad's cut out. You know exactly what you want. You walk in, a kid in a blue shirt, your little yellow badge looks at you and says, hey, how can I help you? And you look at him and you say, I'm just looking. I'm just looking. You're not looking. You're there to buy. You already know what it is you're going to buy. But your initial reaction isn't say, oh, yeah, man, hey, here's what I have. Sell me something. No. You have initial resistance. Your prospect has initial resistance. It's okay to let them say that because here's the good news. I'm going to teach you how to handle initial resistance. Are you with me over here? Are you feeling how effective these techniques are? Again, let me just say one thing to you. Sales is a series of repeatable skills that once you learn and practice over and over again, will make you a great salesperson. You just need the skills. And unfortunately, most sales reps, sales teams are never taught the skills. Well, you're learning some of them right now. So guess what? You're going to quickly engage your decision maker. He's going to blow you off with I'm not interested or just email me something. And you're going to, you're going to say no problem because you're going to have the response to it. So yeah, I'm going to give you a response right now that's going to work when you get I'm not interested or we already have a company. If those are two of the biggest objections or initial resistance statements you get, and I'll bet they are, then here's the response. Get your pens out. Get ready. Here's what you say. I totally understand, John. I'm not calling to sell you anything today. Wow, that'll disarm them, huh? Hey, <laughs> perfectly fine. I'm not calling to sell you anything today. Boy, that helps take their guard right down. Boy, are they relieved to hear that. Yeah, you then say, instead, I'm here to simply see if there might be a fit between us. And hey, if there is, offer you an additional resource you might be able to use later on. Let me ask you. I see how this is going. See, here's the thing. And I'm going to say this one time. This is the, probably the best thing about sales ever. And I say this in all of my groups, all of my trainings, all of my keynotes, everything. Somebody taught me this many, 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 many years ago. It's true. It's been true for the last 30 years. Here's what it is. Are you ready? The greatest thing about sales and being a sales professional is that you already know 80 to 90% of the objections or questions that you're going to get. Why? Because you get them every single day. You got them last year at this time, and next year, if you're still selling, you're going to get the same objections or questions. In other words, 80 to 90% of the selling situations are known in advance. This is great news, everyone. 
listen, this is great news. What that means is that you can prepare. You can get the best practice responses to the selling situations you get over and over again. And what's that going to make you? It's going to make you a top producer in your field, in your company. You're going to make all that money that your other producers aren't making, and sales is going to become easy for you if, and this is a big if, if you're willing to invest some time, energy, and money in making yourself a better sales professional because everything is known. Hey, I understand I'm not calling to sell you anything today. Instead, John, I'm here to simply see if there's a fit between our two companies. And hey, if there is, I'll give you a resource you can use later on. Let me ask you how you're currently outsourcing your XYZ. How are you handling your lead flow? How are you finding your new rep? How are you doing? Immediately puts you back into qualifying. Hey, if I could show you a way, what would it mean if you could? How important it is it for you? Are you still the person who handles? Here are just some of the questions you can ask. All you sales managers out there, you should get together with your sales team, brainstorm, come up with 15, 20 questions that you can ask at this point, a qualifying question. Any type of question to do what? Engage your buyer. This is how you handle the I'm not interested. We've already got somebody who handles that. No problem at all. I'm not trying to sell you anything to see if there might be a fit. By the way, let me ask you, who are you currently using now? There are so many ways for you to reopen the conversation. This is what you're doing. You're coming in the back door. You're prepared for that initial resistance statement. Hey, the guy at Best Buy, they would just teach him. Somebody walks in, can I help you? I'm just looking, no problem. Just browsing, no problem. What, what particular items are you browsing for today? Hey, there's a response to that. Simple. But sales reps are not taught this information, and most of them are too lazy, I hate to say it, to go out and learn this stuff on their own. You, all of you today are not in that group because you're investing your time and energy right now. Good for you. You're learning. You're going to be better after this webinar. Hey, here's another. Let me give you a freebie here. Just send me your information. How many times do you get in a day when you finally do get through that gatekeeper with the old techniques you're using? By the way, get prepared to be in contact with a lot more decision makers because now you're going to have the techniques that are going to help you get there. But how many times in a day do you get the blow off initial resistance statement? Go ahead and email me something. How many times, huh? A lot, don't you? It's initial resistance. Just browsing. Just looking. Hey, just, just email me something. The right response is not probably what you're saying now, which is, okay, what's your email address? All right, I'll get that right off to you. When should I get back? That's all wrong. 80% of the people sitting next to you are saying that. That's wrong. Here's your proper response. Hey, I'd be happy to email you the information. By the way, John, I've got a 64 PDF file that I can send you, but let me ask you a couple of quick questions so I can only send you that part that you're most interested in. Okay, now you can adjust that. Hey, we've got three or four different products. Let me just ask you a couple of quick questions so I send you information on the right one. How are you currently handling your lead flow? Are you still the person who handles XYZ? Put any qualifying question in there you want. See, here's the key. The key, and I'm going to let you write this down. Here's the key. The key here is that you're prepared in advance for the selling situations you're going to run into. Okay? Hey, you know, some people, when they get that response, they just go ahead and email me something, their heart drops into their stomach. They think, well, gee, I'm not going to ever hear back from this person. Gee, this, this job isn't going to make me any money. I'm never going to succeed here. Nobody's interested in what I've That's all wrong. Wrong. The top 20%, they're waiting for it. Man, I dare you to tell me to email me something. I dare you. I double dare you. No, just email me something. <laughs> no problem, man. I've got 15 things I can send you. Let me ask you just a couple of quick questions so I can narrow it down and send you exactly what's going to be of interest to you. So are you the VP of sales or are you the, the, the sales manager? Are you in charge of training? Or are you doing... See, now you're back into control of the phone call. You're back into qualifying your prospect. This is what you need to be. That's how you handle that. All right, how to qualify for timeline. Now, this is crucially important because most sales reps, and if you're an owner or a sales manager or VP and your sales reps are making this mistake and you want to change, then call me, email me, mike at mrinsidesales.com. Let's talk about how I can train your team so they stop doing this. But here's the problem. Most sales reps, and again, if you're a business owner or a sales manager, you know this is true. Most sales reps will put any lead into their pipeline that they can. Hey, if they've got a pulse 
and they'll take information, they become a lead. Here's the problem, they're not qualified. So guess what happens? Most of your time, the sales time, is spent chasing unqualified leads. This is why deals aren't being written. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Most sales reps don't know how to qualify a prospect. They don't know how to control a conversation. They don't know how to engage decision makers. They don't even know how to get through to decision makers. Well, now you'll be able to get through to them and engage them. Here's the thing. At the end of your phone call, you need to qualify. In fact, during your phone call, you need to qualify. But one thing you definitely need to know is timeline. And this helps you qualify your buyer. Now, most sales reps will be afraid to ask this. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. You need to qualify your prospects on time frame. So after you get through your qualification process, after you've engaged your buyer, made sure they're the right person to be speaking with, make sure they're one of the decision makers, their influence, their budget, the competition, once you understand what their buying motives are, at the end of the call, you need to ask this. By the way, John, if you like what you see after our demo, what would be the next steps on your side? Wow. How's that for a qualifying question? If you, it's non-threatening, hey, if you like what you see after we go through our demo, just out of curiosity, what would be the next steps on your side? In other words, get an idea for what their time frame is. Oh, well, you know what? I would send this off to the board have to send this to the committee so that they could review and they'd have to send it up to corporate corporate which is in Europe and of course they don't even meet until summer of next year so I guess that would be it wow wouldn't you like to know that in advance you bet here here's another one hey if you think the solution will work for you what would be your timeline for getting started hey now this is a little more aggressive isn't it yeah you can soften this if you want you can take you can do a combination of both of them but heck, if your sale closes rather quickly and you're able to qualify somebody, why not ask them a trial close at the end of this? If you qualified them properly, you can. Here's another one. Hey, if after the demo this is something you're interested in taking advantage of, could you move on this in the next couple of weeks? Hey, that's fair enough if it's something that you're interested in taking advantage of. So now you're assuming this, right? That's predicated upon that. Could you move on this in the next couple of weeks? You can also turn this into a negative. Is there anything that would stop you from moving on something like this in the next couple of weeks? That's a great way of handling this as well. Find out if or if not this is something that might interest them enough to take action. You absolutely need to know that. You have to find out if this is a true prospect, if they're interested enough to pursue the demo afterwards are you going to be able to ask for the order after your demo most sales reps have no idea and this is why most pipelines are filled with prospects who are not qualified you must qualify on timeline for any of you who are thinking well gee I couldn't ask that Mike that's a little bit forward I haven't even pitched him yet soften these up Hey, that first one's good. Hey, you know, if you like what you see, just give me an idea. Well, what are some of your steps? What's your timeline for, you know, making a decision on something like this? What's your decision? What's your timeline for considering something like this? I mean, you have to put that timeline question in there. Five others, we don't have time to go into that. This is an important one. You have to ask this information. Successful prospecting is made up of being prepared in advance. I told you this before, the beautiful thing about sales is guess what? You already know what's coming. You already know what the objections are. Every time I sit down with a new team, we start training, I have everybody send to me their top objections and blow-offs they get when cold calling. There's about eight of them. Five of them are all the same. Another three are specific to each person's industry. The other ones are all the same. What are your objections when you close? They're all the same. I can write them all down for you right now. Hey, I'm going to need to think about it. We're not sure if we can handle it. We're going to need. I'm going to need to talk this over with the owner, the boss, the regional. They're all the same. If you're prepared in advance, you're going to easily prospect. If you use proven scripted responses, the proven or some of the proven responses I've given you today and other scripted responses, you're going to fly past the initial resistance you're getting now. Practicing perfection on each call. You know, I love saying this. I love standing in front of a room of 100 salespeople, and I say, I want to ask everybody a question. How many people believe that practice makes perfect? Raise your hand. Every hand goes up. 
if the owner's hands go up, the CEO's hands go up, how many people think practice makes perfect? Oh, yeah, it sure does. Then I say, that's absolutely wrong. What? I say, yeah, that's absolutely wrong. Practice doesn't make perfect. Practice only makes permanent. Hey, think about it. Practice only makes permanent. If you practice something incorrectly, if you do something over and over wrong, guess what you're going to get real good at? You're going to get really good at doing it wrong. Absolutely. You need to know how to do things perfectly, which is why we script out to the selling situations we know we're going to get into over and over again. Now, I'm going to take some questions. I've already got a lot of questions here. I'm going to take some questions. Before I do, I have an amazing offer for you, and here's what it is. I have a five CD series that will double your income selling over the phone. It's a $249 product. I put everything that I teach in my on-site trainings here. I'm offering it now for just $99, only 25 of them, however. You're only going to get 25 of these at this price. Let me tell you what you're going to get with this, then I'm going to get to the questions. This is five CDs. They're about an hour each. They're going to change your career. The first thing I'm going to teach you is what it takes to move into the top 20% of your company and your industry. And by the way, when you get there, you double, triple, and quadruple your income. I'm going to tell you how I turned my sales career around, how you can do it too. I'm going to teach you how to do a pre-call preparation and the importance of scripts. Cold calling. Hey, you all want to know how to get better at cold calling? This CD alone is worth $99. I'm going to teach you how to handle initial reflex re responses. I'm going to give you specific responses. I'm going to teach you the real definition of a qualified lead. Hey, if you don't know how to qualify a lead, then you will never be able to identify buyers. And you're just going to be hoping and praying for the best. By the way, I sent the link over about how to get there. I'm going to teach you how to avoid rejection, how to handle incoming leads, how to avoid call reluctance, how to use voicemail and email to your advantage, and so much more. You're going to learn all this on this 5-CD program, and if you want an MP3, you can all just download the MP3s. You'll have them in five minutes. MrInsideSales.com forward slash webinar offer dot htm. This is the complete system, CD number three. I'm going to finally teach you how to close sales like the top 20%, how to overcome initial resistance. I looked at it. It's not for me. What do you say then? I'm going to give you one technique that can instantly get you the deal. You don't even have to pitch. That one technique alone will pay for itself. I'm going to teach you about trial closes. And I'm going to teach you to not answer objections, but isolate them. That one technique will save your bacon all next year. Number four, how to handle the top ten objections. The price is too high. I need to talk to someone. I need to think about I've already got a supplier. I'm going to give you word-for-word -word scripts on how to handle that. Hey, are you already a top 20% closer? Great. I'll teach you how to be a top 1% closer. This CD is all about attitude. This is about building a team of people around you, how to be in the closing arena at all times, how to develop a winning attitude, the power of self-talk. This CD alone will change your career. I have sold thousands of these programs for $249. You can get it right now for $99. In fact, if you go to my website, you're going to buy it for $249. If you buy it today, you're going to get it webinaroffer.htm. Again, this is only good for the first 25 sets or for the next 72 hours, so you're going to want to get on this as soon as you can. I've sent you a link right there. I'm just going to tell you one quick story, and then I'm going to take some questions because I've got a lot of questions here. Okay, number one, somebody asked me, is this, what, is this webinar been recorded? Yes, it is. You're going to get a link to this webinar, and you're going to be able to then take down all of the resource links. Somebody's asking for a resource link. You're going to be able to take all of those down. You can go to my website, by the way, and find all those resources. Just go to MrInsideSales.com. On the right-hand side, you'll see the e-zine sign up. In the middle, you'll see the free webinar link, and on the bottom, you'll see the Inside Sales Training Blog. That's my link to my blog, so you get all that information there. By the way, one thing for all the business owners out there and all the sales managers, VPs of sales, I teach Inside Sales. I write scripts for winning, producing sales teams. I will give you and your managers a way to evaluate and grade adherence to the best practice approaches. I can help you 
double and triple and quadruple either the size of your team or the production of your existing team, email me, Mike at Mr. Inside Sales. Dot com. Okay, I'm going to take some questions here, but before I do, I just want to say one thing about these CDs. The material you're going to learn on these CDs are what I use to double my income in 90 days. Double my income in 90 days. I was a failing bottom 80% sales producer, they called me. I could barely close the front door when I came in Monday morning to come to work. I learned all the information here from another sales trainer named Stan Ballou. I've perfected it. I've improved it. I've made it current, and what I've done is put everything into this five CD series. Everything you're going to learn here is what I use to double my income in 90 days. Nine months later, I doubled it again, became the number one producer out of five branch offices. I was a top 1% closer and always have been because I did what I told you to do at the beginning of this program, invest time, energy, and money into yourself and it will come back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times over your career. And if you don't do that, then you will struggle and wonder what's wrong for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of your career. You don't want to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and take some questions. Again, invest in yourself. You can either have the five CDs mailed to your home or you can have the MP3s. You can be listening to it tomorrow. All right, here. Well, all right, let's see here. Okay, what do you recommend, Ross is asking, when the owner decision maker isn't in the office when I call? No problem. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to call back at another time. What's usually a good time to reach him or her? Ask the decision maker, ask the gatekeeper what a good time to reach that decision maker is, and then call back at that time when indicated. You can also get a bit friendly if they're in the talkative mood. Ask their name. Talk them up a bit. It's a longer technique building rapport with the gatekeeper. but. Just ask them, what's a, usually always a good time for me to connect with John, to catch John in the office? And if they say, I don't know, then just take your chances. Call them first thing. Make them your very first call. Make them the last call. Call them at lunchtime. I always try a prospect five times before I leave a voicemail, five times before I send an email. I pick up the phone and make that phone call. And by the way, most people these days, the millennials out there who are used to texting and emailing and, and not communicating by phone, they're terrified of picking up the phone. They don't know how to do it well. So guess what? Prospects are getting called less and less and less because people don't like making phone calls. You can immediately differentiate yourself by getting good at picking up that phone, making that connection. You'll make a lot more money when you do. Somebody is asking these CDs, are they CDs? I've said this already. Are they CDs or MP3s? Either way, you can get either one. Let me just say one more thing about these CDs. What you need to do and this is really, really, really important. What you need to do when you get this information is make a commitment to listening to it 30 times so that every technique and response and rebuttal is automatic for you. There was a great football coach. His name was Don Shula. Had the only undefeated team in NFL history. He said, you know what? We drill practice and rehearse over and over and over and over again so that our technique, our footwork, everything we do is perfect and automatic. There's the key word, automatic. Because if we get into a football situation and we don't know what to do, or if we get into a situation and we need to think about it, it's too late. It's too late. And it's the same thing here. You cannot think about a response. You need to have it right away, know exactly what it is you're going to say, when you're going to say it. Okay, so let's hear some questions here. All right, here, I've got a question. Okay. Okay, so somebody says, how do you handle the objection when the prospect says, I currently am already under contract or have a vendor providing your service, thanks for calling. Let me give you a great response for that because, again, all this is is an initial resistance. That's all it is. It's just a blow off. It's just, hey, I'm just browsing. I'm going to give you the best response for that. This is called the next in line technique. Get ready to write it down. Here's what you do. Somebody says, I've already got a broker. Everything's fine. You say, no problem at all. Let me ask you a quick question. Could I be the next person in line you speak to in case you need a second opinion? 
That's the technique. Hey, no problem at all. Can I, I call it the next in line pitch. Can I be the next person in line you speak to in case you ever need to evaluate a new vendor? Can I be the next person in line you speak to in case you need to compare pricing down the road? Can I be the next person in line? Whatever it is for your product or service, you just say, hey, no problem at all. Let me ask you this. Can I be the next person in line you speak to in case you ever need to X, Y, Z? That's all. And if you ask that question, they'll almost always say yes because they think they're getting you off the phone. You say, great, let me go ahead and take down your information. I'll send you my contact information. Please keep it with your vendor files. You take all that down, you give me your information, and then you say, by the way, just out of curiosity, what might have to happen for you to even begin looking at a different provider? All right, so you come in the back door, ask that question. I'm going to stop the recording here, but I'm going to keep going and continue to ask questions here. Let's see where my little recording link is. Because this is going to be a very long recording if I don't do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take um, another question here. All right, let's see here. Let me just go down here and get to another question. If you get the prospect's cell phone instead of the office phone and they answer hello, is the first script you suggested a good idea or would you change it? Maybe saying, please connect me. Absolutely, you're going to want to change it to whomever you're speaking to. So you're going to want to change it. I'm just trying to find the audio recording here. Let's see here. They changed. Uh, hang on just one moment. Let me try and stop this recording for you. All right, we'll have to edit it later. So, yeah, of course you're going to want to change your opening because you're not dealing with a gatekeeper. You're not dealing with a gatekeeper. You're going to say, oh, hey, I'm glad that I reached you, John. Hey, briefly, I have a quick question for you. So what are you doing? You are immediately engaging your buyer which is exactly what it is you want to do. You want to engage your buyer. So yeah, that's how you're going to do that. You're going to speak to them, you're going to engage with them, and you're going to then have that conversation. All right, let me go ahead and answer uh, another question here. <laughs> okay, and uh, this is a very good one. Somebody says, I don't have the money. Of course you don't have the money. You see, this is, let me just get back to one thing that I said earlier. There are about five to eight objections that you're going to get over and over and over and over again. And again, I'm not interested. We've already got a vendor. I can't afford it. I don't have the money. Hey, people have been using... People have been saying, hey, I don't have the money since the Egyptian markets 3,000 years ago. Okay, that's an objection that you had better be prepared for. I teach you how to do that on this 5 CD series. So you're going to want to invest in that and invest in yourself. Okay, I'm going to take another question and then we're just about running out of time here. How many calls a day is needed to book appointments for a full-time status? Depends on the industry, depends on your contact rate, and that's one of the very first things you're going to need to begin doing is you're going to need to find a way to, to begin tracking how many phone calls you need to make, how many phone calls you need to make, and how many things you need to do. Uh, in other words, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read about how to stop the recording. You're going to need to find out how many phone calls you need to make that turn into contacts with decision makers, not with gatekeepers, but with decision makers. And then you're going to want to measure how many decision maker conversations result in appointments. That tracking of those specific metric information is going to give you that answer. And that's how you're going to do that. All right, I didn't want to go past an hour. I just want to do one more plug with this product, and I want to say this to you. Years ago, years ago, I had an opportunity to invest in a six cassette series by my mentor, Stan Ballou, called How to Double Your Income Selling Over the Phone. He had given us a, a speech for our group, and that was $127 back in 1985. 
cassettes. They had cassettes back then, if you remember. And I remember the 127 bucks. I didn't have 127 dollars. I didn't have it. I had a credit card that had about 300 dollars of credit on it. And Stan Ballou said one thing that I'm going to say to you today that changed my career. If it changes your career, you'll be happy you heard it and you'll be happy you acted on it. He said, "Hey, he said, here's the thing about salespeople." He said, if you're willing to do the things that most sales reps are not willing to do, then soon you'll be able to afford and do and benefit from the things that most sales reps will never get to experience. And he said, what that means is that you need to make a commitment into your career, you need to learn the right techniques, and then you need to practice perfection. And you know what, it made sense. If you're willing to do the things that most sales reps are not willing to do, and most sales reps won't even attend a webinar, most sales reps aren't going to pick up their credit card and invest in themselves, most people aren't going to learn the better techniques. They're just going to say, yeah, 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 this isn't going to work. What's for lunch? I hope that's not you, because if it is, you'll regret it for a very long time. If that is you in terms of wanting to become the best at what you do and you're ready to make a commitment to double or triple your income next year, and change your life and your family's life, then you're going to want to take advantage of this offer while you can. $99 to change your sales career, $99 to change your sales future. It's all there for you today. I want to thank you very much for attending this program today. I want to thank you very much uh, for listening all the way to the end. And I want to wish you the very best sales month and year coming up in 2016. All the best.